At the start of this month, Nvidia touted their RTX Super Series line of cards. And these were a direct response to the upcoming launch of AMD's Navi graphics cards, that is the 5700 and 5700 XT. However, the Super Series in its naming scheme is a little bit different to what you might expect. For instance, on the desk here, we've got the RTX 2060 Super, which comes in with 2176 CUDA cores over that of the 1920 of the 2060, and it comes in at $50 US more. However, one interesting thing about this card is it's actually based off the RTX 2070 more so than the 2060 in that it has the same memory bus at 256 bit, and it also has eight gigabytes of VRAM, giving it an extra two gigabytes of VRAM over that of the 2060. It also has higher ray tracing performance coming in with six giga rays versus five giga rays on the 2060. Though today we're gonna to focus on this $400 GPU, compare it against the RTX 2060, RTX 2070, and also the 5700. Now I actually don't have the 5700 XT on hand, which actually comes in at the exact same price as this card, and that's in the mail, so I will be doing a review on that separately soon here on the channel. Though with that aside, let's get into some of these gaming benchmarks and talk about who this card is for and why. So going through some of the numbers here at 1080p and both 1440p, we can see here with Shadows of the Tomb Raider, at 1080p it competes with the 5700 and pulls well ahead of that of the 2060. The 2070 still pulls ahead by just a little bit, but that's because it's got 5% more CUDA cores on board. Moving over to the 1440p numbers, it does start to pull ahead of both the 2060 and the AMD's 5700 a little bit more in comparison to the 1080p numbers. Moving over to Strange Brigade, we can see a similar trend here where the 2060 Super does perform quite well both at 1080p and 1440p. Though moving over now to Apex Legends, this is a game where AMD have optimized their graphics cards for this particular title and it does show in the numbers where the 5700 is coming out well ahead but the 2060 Super does still beat that of the 2060 comes very close to the 2070. And moving over to Tom Clancy's Division 2 at 1080p does quite well but then it does pull ahead a little bit more at 1440p and then moving into Dirt Rally 2 both at 1080p and 1440p I noticed something a little bit different about this title and one thing I did in particular with the settings was put the anti-aliasing up pretty high and in this particular title, the 2060 Super does perform quite well against the RTX 2070, RTX 2060, and the 5700. So I did a few more tests here at the studio, and this is when I decided to test Shadows of the Tomb Raider, this time at 1080p with SMAA at four times. And this puts a lot of strain on the memory interface. And here we can see the 2060 at 1080p actually comes close to that of the 5700. And then the 2070 Super does pull comfortably ahead of both these other cards. And then when we overclocked, we did get some significant gains on the 2060 Super that scaled better for the Super card than the non-Super 2060. And then the 5700 didn't do so well in this particular title when it was overclocked. And then the last title we got up here is Far Cry New Dawn, 1440p with SMAA turned on ultra settings. We see here that the Super does come ahead of the 2060, but not by a whole lot. And the 5700 actually pulls ahead by a little bit in this particular title. Looking at the power consumption figures, we can see that we've got 302 watts roughly on the 2060 in Shadows of the Tomb Raider. Overclocked, it did a little bit more on the wattage, and then the 2060 Super does juice a little bit more wattage at 321 watts, then overclocked 345. The 5700 was the most efficient out of the box, though overclocking this did see the wattage raise slightly above that of the 2060. So with the gaming benchmarks out of the way, we can see that the RTX 2060 Super actually comes pretty close to that of the 2070, more so than the 2060. And at $50 US more, I would easily buy this over the original 2060 if you wanted to go with the NVIDIA option. Of course, the 5700, 5700 XT are options from AMD, but if you are wanting to extract some of those features that NVIDIA offers, for instance, the game filter and also DLSS and ray tracing. And the last thing I'm gonna mention as well is the NV encoder, where that's actually very good in their latest iteration of Turing GPUs, besides the 1650, which actually uses the old NV encoder. But the newest one on the RTX 2060 Super, just like the RTX 2060, will perform phenomenally well if you wanna stream and not bog down your whole system, especially if you don't have a lot of cores and threads, this will do an excellent job. And I'm gonna pull up Epos's Vox's test results here, where he showed that this is actually giving out better quality than that of H.264 CPU encoding at medium settings, which is quite strenuous on your CPU for streaming. 
But now focusing on this founder's card in particular, at the back you've got a DVI dual link out, you've got USB type C, two display outs and a HDMI 2.0. The weight of this card comes in roughly at 975 grams, includes a back plate, as well as having two additional 90 mil fans, which do a very solid job of cooling. From the results I tested here in Unigine Heaven, when the card was overclocked, we see at 100%, we're getting 62 degrees Celsius max temperatures. This is in a 25 degree ambient environment, and that had 59 decibels of noise. Stepping it down to 80%, we saw a maximum of 67 degrees, 53 decibels. And then what I feel is the sweet spot is 60% fan speed, 72 degrees Celsius, and a 47 decibel max noise reading. And then onto the auto fan speeds, they maxed out at 52%, 45 decibels, and 76 degrees Celsius. So the cooler implemented on the Founders Edition, I do like this solution. It is doing a good job at cooling and keeping noises down. If you wanted to make a custom fan profile in Afterburner, for example, you could maybe set 20% idle speeds and then ramp that up to maximum of 60% and you'd have low noise and good temperatures. So now I'm closing this review off for you guys. The 2060 Super at 400 USD is not the best value for money in 2019, but it is a better solution than both the 2060 and the 2070 in that value orientated segment of the mid range. And the features it does offer are pretty strong and I do like the cooling solution. But here's where things start to get a little bit weird because in the US you can get this for around the retail price of 400 USD and the RTX 2060 is currently going for around 340 US. Then when I check the Australian prices, you can currently get that for 474 Aussie and then this is coming in at over 689 Aussie dollars, making the RTX 2060 in Australia a much better buy if you're looking for value for money and you wanna get a brand new card. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's review, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the RTX 2060 Super. I've also reviewed the 5700. If you wanna check that out, I'll put the link up here for you guys. The 5700 XT and also the 2070 Super and 2080 Super reviews will be coming on later this month. If you wanna see those the moment they drop, sub button, ring the bell, it's down there. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.